Let's take a look how we can create a breathing animation with Genesis 9 and Das Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with Das Studio. On today's episode I'm going to show you how to make a breathing animation with a Genesis 9 character. This is what it looks like. This is Freya and she appears to be more or less alive, which is kind of nice. These, All these principles we've already looked at in the previous episode with the eye blink. So in this case she interpolates between two poses. There's also a little bit of a resting period and she changes her expression from one into the other and the whole thing is set up so that it can loop. Let's have a look how to make that happen. While you could bring in a full animation for this, it is actually fairly simple to just interpolate between two poses that I've crafted myself here. This is an exhale pose. If I load that, this is what it looks like. And then I'm going to go and interpolate that into an inhale pose. If you're not familiar with posing, there is a big section in the DAS Studio Masterclass on posing. There's also a DAS Plus live stream that you can watch in which I'm going through all these principles and how to craft these poses by yourself. Or of course, you can bring in any of the poses that you find on the DAS store or on other marketplaces for this. So I'm going to start with the exhale pose and I'm going to have a think about the timing of my animation first. So I'm thinking the person is going to breathe in over perhaps one second, that's 30 frames. Then we may want to hold Hold the breath there for kind of 10 frames and then we're going to go and exhale again over one second. So that's 30, 60, 70 frames in total. Let's make that our total duration. This is it, 70. Let's call it 71. So we have a frame 0 and a frame 1 as well as a frame 70. There we go. And on frame 1 I already have a keyframe that can stay as it is. I'm going to go and move my playhead over to frame 30 and then I'll just go ahead and load in the inhale pose. And that will now create another keyframe at this point, which means I can now go and interpolate between the first one and the second one. And that's already pretty cool. Now I want to go and hold the breath there for 10 frames. So at frame 40, I need another keyframe. So I can either go and load in the inhale pause again, which will create a keyframe here, or I can go and switch over to node over here. I think it was on properties previously. Now we need to switch this to node. And then I'll go and click this little icon, which will create a keyframe. But notice when that happens, it creates a keyframe literally on every track that my animation has to offer. Just something to keep in mind. This has also happened on the previous keyframe that we've had here. If I go and open this up, expand, expand all, you can see that a keyframe has been set on all these properties here. And that's kind of okay for us for now. Just keep it in mind because we need to remove some of them later on when it comes to interpolating the expressions. I just wanted you to know that this is how Das Studio works. So I'm going to go and collapse all of these again and I'm going to go ahead and move over to the last frame of our animation, namely frame 70, at which point I'm going to go and load the exhale pose again and then we have a full loop. Click play and see the magic happen right in front of our eyes. I'll zoom in a little bit. That's a good start. Now this is a cycle that's only 70 frames long. So if I wanted to add expression changes to it, then 70 frames isn't going to be enough. I need at least twice as much so that I can go and interpolate from a resting position into a smile and then perhaps back. I'm going to go and multiply it by two, but you can also multiply it by three or four if you need it for this to be longer. I'm going to go and make this 141, which is 70 times two plus one. So 141, there we go. And now it means we're going to have to go and repeat that loop because if I play it now then after the first inhale and exhale the figure stands still. So I can either go and set my keyframes again or a more elegant solution is to either copy and paste those keyframes or even better like I've shown you last time save this as an animated pause. So with my Genesis 9 figure selected here head over to the plus icon and save a pause preset. I'm going to call it breathing cycle. And in this case, I do indeed want an animated frame range. I don't think we went all the way to 140. So all the way up to 70 is fine with the whole Genesis 9 figure selected. I'll hit accept. And that means I now have a new animation that I can load in at the position 
where the previous one ends. So I'm going to go and park my playhead on frame 70. There's actually a nice little shortcut here on this icon bar down here. We haven't really spoken about all these icons, but the one in the middle is, of course, play. And then the one next to it is to step forward. So this goes one frame forward or next to the play button is one frame back. The next to that is snap to the next keyframe like this one. That would put my playhead directly on frame 70. Now it's kind of exactly what I want. But if I do it again, nothing happens because there is no last or next keyframe on my timeline so that's not going to work but the one at the very end here as well as the one in the front that's going to snap you to the very end or to the very front of the animation respectively so this one would go to the very end and now if i wanted to go to the last keyframe i can just go and click this button here which will go and snap my playhead right there this is where I need it. Now I'm going to go with the Genesis figure selected. I'm going to go and double click the breathing cycle animation, which will now load this in again at frame 70. And then I have a longer loop. There we go. This is a good start. Now let's take a look at these expressions here. So first of all, I want to have a look at what I'd like to change on my figure. I'm going to go to the first frame of the animation again, head over to my parameters tab. And in here, I'm going to go and close down general. I'm going to go and come down to the pose controls into the head. And in the head, I'm going to go to expressions. And there's a long list of things that I can now dial in here. So I'm thinking perhaps we're going to go with something like a smiling expression zoom in on my Genesis face here so I can see what the implication of my dial fiddling is. So perhaps this one here, smile full face, that is a bit of a subtle smile. And if I dial that up to kind of 30 or 40, that's a very subtle smile. I think I might do that 40 perhaps. There's also here this one smile open, smile open full face. That is a broader smile. So I could transition from one into the other or I can use both of them at the same time. So usually when we pull expressions, we kind of maybe, you know, if the person is a bit shy, we would pull the expression first a little bit and then a little bit more. So I think I might do this in, in stages here. I don't want to overdo it, but perhaps smile full face up to 30 would be a good first start. And then maybe we'll go and crank it up to kind of 75 with a little bit of smile, open full face to 20. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to go and decide where that expression is supposed to happen and also find these expression dials in my timeline. That's very important. So otherwise I'll set a keyframe on all properties and I don't really want that. So let's go and find them here. I'm going to go and collapse everything, collapse, collapse all. That means I can go and start digging again, just like I had it here. So that was in my properties, pose controls, and then in pose controls, I was in the head. So it's basically exactly reflecting what was in the parameters tab here. So in head, we have expressions and in expressions, we have the smile and smile open full face. Now notice that both my tracks already have, or in fact, all the expressions already have keyframes on here. And this would be problematic if I wanted to interpolate from one into another, say on frame 20, the moment I set something like the smile full face up to here now, and I'll just go to 100% just to show you this. The next keyframe is putting this back at zero. So even though if I like this animation, the moment I move forward, my expression vanishes again. So this is another stumbling block that newcomers often have a problem with. And it's just the way DAS Studio works that sometimes when you set keyframes, those keyframes are set on every available property of the figure. And so in our case, we don't want that. We, in fact, we don't want any expressions because I'm going to set those manually. So let's go and remove all of these from the timeline. The best way to do that is to go to expressions or just collapse them. And then you see these little triangles here that I spoke about. Now the triangles are not keyframes, the round things, these things are actual keyframes here, all of these, but the triangles are not keyframes, but I want to remove everything that is in here. So I can either go and left click and drag a marquee around a bunch of keyframes and then go and right click and hit delete selected keys. That'll work. But of course, I've missed a few. So there's a lot more keyframes in here than I've currently selected. So this is where these little triangles come in handy. If you close this up, all I want to do is basically draw a marquee around all these triangles in the expressions tab and then go and remove those. 
The last one here, got to be brutally honest, is a little difficult to get. So you can always extend your play range by a little bit more. So that way we have an easier time to grab the last one. It's barely noticeable, but I'm drawing a marquee. The moment I let go of my mouse, all my keyframes are highlighted. And then I can go and right click and delete all these selected keys. So now all the keys that are underneath all these triangles will be deleted takes a little moment and now we have nothing left which is kind of nice also notice we have lost the first keyframe for our expression so it's not set to zero there's no keyframe here and that is another important thing to remember so under my smile and smile open full face i need to set a keyframe here so that this non-expression of my character is now in place We've already seen how to do this in the previous episode. I have to go over here and switch from node back to properties because it is in fact properties that we're keying in. And the two highlighted tracks together, can be one track, can be both tracks. They will now both get a keyframe the moment I hit this little keyframe button down here at the right hand side. See that here? Once this is switched to properties, I can select plus here and then I get two keyframes here, but nowhere else. So that's kind of the magic between this being switched to node and to properties here. Okay, we have a non-expression on the first frame and now we go perhaps to frame 20, at which point I would like my figure to start smiling. Now remember, we need to think in keyframe pairs. So at this keyframe, nothing happens. If I crank up my smile, it'll interpolate from this keyframe over to that. That's not what I want. I want the expression to be nil from here to there. So I need another keyframe here, uh, both on these expressions here. And then perhaps over the next 10 frames or five frames, maybe 10 frames, I would like for the expression to start coming in. So it is over these two keyframes that I'm now going to start interpolating. So perhaps we said 30 and then maybe also smile open face, maybe 10. So we'll just have two dials at the same time here. So this is where the interpolation happens over these frames. So from here to frame 20, nothing happens. From 20 to 30, we're going to blend this in. Now over the next maybe say 20 or 30 frames, I'd like for the expression to hold. So once again, I do another keyframe here because I want nothing else to happen. I do not want to interpolate. I want to hold that expression. And then perhaps over the next 10 frames or so, she starts or they start smiling even more. So at that point, I can go and crank up the two values a little bit more. Now notice when I do that, Das Studio sets a keyframe automatically. So we said 70 is going to work out well. And maybe then here 20. There we go. So as I've done that, the keyframes have already been set because the value has changed from what we had there before. So now we interpolate into the smile. Then we broaden the smile a little bit more. And then perhaps we're going to hold it to, let's say, frame 110, at which point I would like the smile to disappear. So once again, from here to there, I want nothing to happen. So I'm going to set another keyframe so that the smile is being held rather than slowly interpolated out. I don't want to do that. And now I'm going to go over the next 10 frames, perhaps, I'll go and set these values back to zero. Now, don't use the Alt left click trick here. That usually sets values back to their default value. So technically it would work. But if I were to do that, and I'll try this on the open face here. If I do that Alt left click to set the slider back to its default, notice that all my keyframes have disappeared. So in animations, it's important not to do that. Control Z will undo that. All I want to do is here set this slider also back to zero. And now I have that keyframe here. So very important. And that is basically it. All I want to do now, just to finish that off at the very end of my animation, I want to set another keyframe on these two tracks, just so that nothing untoward happens here. Let's do that. Hit plus, and then that is that. Okay, Let's see how my animation looks with the interpolated smile and the breathing in place. Start smiling, smiles a little bit more, and then goes and stops smiling. So I really like the smile coming in, but I think the stopping smiling is a little bit abrupt. So I think for that, I think we could just take a little bit more time. And nothing's easier than that. We can just grab those keyframes and move them over a little bit so that the broader smile gets interpolated out a little bit slower. So we do that over here. I hope you can see that. No, you can't. Dang, my face is in the way. There we go. That'll, that'll work. So 
this is where we stop smiling from broad smile to nothing. And I'm thinking I can just go and grab these two keyframes, left click them over here and put them onto frame 140. And this should now go and interpolate the big smile, the broad smile out a little bit slower. And it works well. There we go. So if you need to make any changes there, just grab those round icons, not the triangles. The triangles can't be dragged and dropped, but the little round icons, they can be dragged and dropped. That's great. Now, as a little bonus here, you already know how to do the eye bling, so I'll let you experiment with that. But as a little bonus, instead of the gray figure, let's make this a custom character here. So instead of that being just the androgynous Genesis 9 figure, let's see what happens if we can if we turn this into a custom character. Let's put some basic wear on our character. And then with the figure selected, let's go and grab perhaps Josie. Let's see if that works. I should have tried that out before. I didn't. The little window comes up and says, hey, would you like to turn this character into a different character or would you like to load a new figure? I very much like to convert this character. So I'm just going to go and hit accept. And that will now apply the Josie custom shape as well as the skin shader to her. There we go. That's Josie. But, and here's the, the tricky bit, the moment I hit play, over the first few frames, Josie turns back into androgynous Genesis figure with the skin shader. What's going on there? That's a total scam, huh? What's happening? It has to do with the additional keyframes that are being set. And of course, us setting a custom character on the first frame means there is somewhere another keyframe that resets that back to the androgynous Genesis figure on frame 30. So it's pretty much exactly like what we had with the expressions. We just need to make sure all these additional keyframes in that track are cleared. The trick to that is once again with the Genesis figure selected here, we go and open them up and there is under properties we find actor and under actor we find people and this is where our custom characters are dialed in under people i would imagine actually feminine let me just have a look here josie 9 see that so this is essentially josie 9 this keyframe and this is genesis once again so i can either go and delete this keyframe that'll already take care of it delete this key now we have josie beyond frame 40 in fact but if we want to make sure absolutely no other characters are being dialed in, we can just go and remove all keyframes from the people track here. We only have one, so just go and left click and drag a marquee around that. I don't know if that was absolutely visible here. If I just go, let me just go and select the different tracks so that you can see what I'm doing here. You can either, if it's just a single one, you can click that one. If it's multiple, you left click and drag this tiny marquee around it and then you can work like that. So mine was on the people track here. That's it. Don't hit backspace or delete by the way because that'll delete whatever is selected in the scene tab. Um, reasons. So if you want to make sure just to delete the keyframes, right click on them and check delete selected keys. And now Josie and all other custom arrangements for the rest of this track have been deleted. And only what is set on the first keyframe will be retained for the rest of the animation. So there we go. That is how we do that. And this is another pitfall that people often fall in. And I totally appreciate that. It is really isn't easy and it's not that intuitive. So that is why I'm here to help you get through this. In our next episode, I'm going to have a look at how to put these things together, including the eye blink animation. I want to talk about saccades. And I also want to show you how to render this out as a circular 360 degree camera animation. Join me for that.